Meanwhile, the president's critics say that they hope the anonymous no-confidence vote will embolden ANC lawmakers to support his removal by shielding them from pressure from other party members. If the vote succeeds, then Mr. Zuma, who has been in power since 2009, and his entire cabinet will be forced to step down. Coming acting president of South Africa, they've got no reason to hide behind any form of intimidation or accusation. So we have fought for all members, not only of the ANC, including other opposition parties who have been intimidating their members and forcing them to vote for President Zuma. So this is a victory to the opposition, this is a victory to South Africa, this is a victory to the constitution. The choice is quite simple actually. So it's a choice between whether you stand you, with Jacob Zuma or you stand against Jacob Zuma. It's, a, it's as simple as that choice. You stand for the interests of South Africa or you don't. And there's more. The spokesman of the South Africa's ruling ANC, Zizi Kodwa, says he does not understand uh, the hype over what he describes as a vexatious vote of no confidence. Speaking to Channel's television at the end of the party's caucus meeting today, he says the opposition is spoiling for a fight should know that the party is not folding its arms while it's been attacked. Not really, I think uh, this is a calm before the storm. Uh, there is not, we don't understand the anxiety and the excitement around this so-called motion of no confidence. Something as frivolous and vexatious as this. Um, our point of view, very clear from the ANC point of view, is not about President Zuma. It's about collapsing government. It's about collapsing and dislodging a democratically elected government of the African National Congress. And if there's any way where government enjoys the legitimacy of the people, it's through a ballot box. Within 2019, people must allow the ANC. And if they got views about the ANC, uh, they must mobilize for 2019. I know the anxiety and the propaganda is that only the ANC MPs are expected to vote against their own president. Uh, in fact, we have also been talking to members of the opposition who some of whom are not happy about the opposing benches. So if you say opposition benches, they want 151. They are not united, by the way. Themselves, they don't have that 151. They're not saying the same thing. So the propaganda out there is as though the, the opposition is united. Only the ANC is divided. The reality is different. We are also talking to opposition benches. Members who are also voting with the ANC who are unhappy about the opposition. From the ANC point of view, we will vote this um, uh, vote of no confidence. No, we will reject it as the ANC MPs. Well, joining us now to discuss more, this is our South Africa Bureau Chief, Betty Rivia. Thank you for your time on the program. All right. Uh, I was thinking it wasn't Betty there. Okay, Betty. Uh, the voting has begun. Give us a sense of the position of things. Betty, if you can, oh right, I think uh, Betty has a little problem uh, hearing me there. Uh, let's keep that aside as well for a while and we'll get back to Betty on that if we can. Uh, there's still more on South Africa and we'll talk about the South African economy and how it's taken all of these. The country's financial markets have been under serious pressure lately. Analysts are watching the markets and the local currency for any signs of nervousness by the end of the confidence vote. It's the eighth time that a vote of no confidence has been called for by opposition politicians against President Zuma. As a no-confidence vote will be cast through a secret ballot, market players and currency traders have been waiting for the voting results. There's a lot that has been happening in terms of politics that has been quite negative and has negatively affected the currency as a result. And if there is this, um, if, if we are assured that there will be change and change will be drastic and we're hoping that change will be for the better, the currency um, will react or will respond accordingly. Market movements like currency swings depend on a myriad of issues and the past history has shown that sometimes it is priced in and sometimes it isn't. I think that uh, it's probably fair to argue that um, you know, what we know is already in the market. Uh, there's no 
there's no sort of surprise that has materialized through the course of uh, through the course of today. While currency and market reaction is likely, there's a more pressing matter. South Africa is on tenterhooks uh, with the ratings agency, uh, and as soon as the end of next uh, of this week, we could see the next ratings agency uh, pronouncement or announcement around how South Africa is doing. I think that um, what they'd be concerned about would be the impact of the uh, decision, um, whether it's negative or positive, on the South African economy. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange continued on its record-breaking run on Monday, and the currency will weaken until the announcement by the Speaker in late afternoon trading. Then it will strengthen significantly as the Speaker announces a secret ballot. Currency fluctuations are based on political uncertainties to some extent. In terms of the market, many of the counters are internationally exposed, so there isn't that much reaction to local news. Let's get back to our top story of the day. Uh, that's the elections going on in Kenya. We can now uh, join uh, Kenyan journalist Teddy Otieno, who's been following the elections uh, throughout the day. He joins us from the capital, Nairobi. Uh, thank you for your time on the program. Let me just get straight into it. Teddy, tell us, are the electorates enthusiastic about these elections or is there voter apathy? Well, Kenyan stand out in large numbers uh, this morning when elections kicked off at 6 a.m. That is East African time. Currently, there are a pensive lot of their way, the results. And as we're speaking, the results are already tricking, trickling in for the presidential vote. But then either party is hoping to register victory in this one. Uh, so far, no major incident. Uh, the general feel or the general atmosphere here is peaceful. Over to you. Give us a sense of, you know, how the elections have been going so far. Uh, we heard that there were earlier there was some kind of, you know, squabble. Uh, does this heighten tensions that, you know, there could be violence? Well, I see Chairperson Wafula Chibukati moved in to ensure that, uh, or rather to avert any possibilities or any tension rising uh, due to the cases of whether the mishaps that were reported earlier on. After he reformed the huge turnout by Kenyans, he encouraged voters to keep turning up and uh, adjust uh, to actually be able to exercise the democratic right to vote. Uh, meanwhile, other people are still voting. For example, in Meru County, in Sierra County, we still have people voting. Uh, this is because for the simple reason that they started uh, voting a little bit late. So IBC said, uh, IBC being the electoral agency here, IBC said that... Uh, uh, for the particular number of hours that, will, that was lost in the morning, uh, it's actually going to compensate the voters. So uh, that is why we're having extensions in various counties. Uh, but the elections have not been shy of mishaps. I'm saying this because, uh, you know, uh, the, electra, uh, the, the, the electra, uh, electoral voter identification system uh, posted a slow start in various parts of the country, including the Kato Nairobi in Kibra area, where uh, we had some hitches. There's also been heavy downpour in you know, various parts of a country like Wajia County in the far flung counties in Kenya. Thank you, Teddy, for your thoughts on the elections going on in Kenya. Kenya journalist Teddy Otiano speaking to us from Nairobi. Still to come on Network Africa. Nigerian innovator uses app to fight food wastage. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.